Hello, everyone. Thank you for being interested in our presentation. I'm Hongping Zhang. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go to this year's conference, but I recorded the at least the first half of the presentation. So uh, as you probably already know, we are going to talk about study abroad and specifically the memory of study abroad and how it affects future sustainable tourist behaviors. So uh, I'll start with a general background of the body of knowledge about sustainability and study abroad. Mainly, it was in the past 20 years. There were new study abroad programs that have been developed intentionally to teach about sustainability. And there were conceptual papers, empirical studies that have been published talking about the natural, the necessary partnership between study abroad and sustainability. And also Taryn conducted and colleagues conducted a series of studies which confirmed the effectiveness of teaching about sustainability and global citizenship through studying abroad. And more recently, 2022, NAFSA's annual conference was themed around building our sustainable future. And 2023, the Forum of Education Abroad published a book about sustainable education abroad featuring best practices. So we know that the attention around the study abroad and the sustainability is growing, while we also identified some gaps and we want to address some of them in this study. The first gap was there is a lack of study on the long-term impact and changes of student behaviors. Previous studies used pre-test and post-test, which are definitely important, which confirmed, yes, study abroad is effective in teaching about sustainable behaviors. But we also want to know, right, after this short trip, are our students looking back and really using these memories to change their behaviors? Therefore, we want to focus on our study abroad alumni and their memories to understand the long-term changes and impact. Now, the second is talking about how we study sustainability. A lot of previous studies focused more on the pro-environmental behavior, the basically environmental aspect of sustainability. However, we probably all know, right, sustainability has at least uh, the three general pillars, which is the environmental, social, and economic aspects. So we want to include all three of them in this study. Now, the third one was, you probably noticed, I kept saying the programs that focused on teaching about sustainability are effective. However, there is a lack of study talking about education abroad in general. How about all these different types and themes of programs? Are education abroad in general is useful in promoting sustainable tourist behaviors? And so to answer this question, we thought about, well, if you are not really focusing on teaching about sustainability, the impact probably is indirect through cultivating global citizens through study abroad. And so that st the students will become more aware and engage in sustainable behaviors. So focusing on uh, the right side of the slide, the way that we want to address these issues is also our theoretical framework for this research. So uh, let's start with memory. So when we're talking about we want to understand memory, we are using the framework of functions of autobiographical memory. Autobiographical memory is our personal memory, and especially the memory that we use to form a coherent self-concept. And in terms of functions that is about the reflection part. So we use our memory for our everyday life. And what exactly do we use them for? According to psychology theories, there were three broad uses of autobiographical memory, including directing behaviors, 
establishing and maintaining social bonding and maintaining self-continuity. So that's the general theory. And in our study, we specifically focusing on the directive function of autobiographical memory. Uh, one reason is that because sustainable behavior is, is about behavior. So we want to focus on the behavior part of memory. And also, uh, I actually conducted previous studies. That's my dissertation, actually. I interviewed study abroad alumni, talked about their use of memory, and I already identified the dimensions of uh, using study abroad memory. So I am using that in this new quantitative project. Okay, so the two levels that I identified in terms of using study abroad memory, one is directing travel behaviors. So this is something that's more specific. They learned about how to book tickets, how to choose accommodations, how to decide what to do during travel. And they learned those things from study abroad. They can use it as a model in their future travel. So that's directing travel behaviors. Another level is directing life trajectory. So use study abroad memories to make larger life decisions who I want to become in the future, what's my career path, what's my lifestyle. And they also reflect on their study abroad experiences to make some of those decisions. So that's what we mean by studying memory and the use of memory. Now, going on, moving forward, Sustainable tourist behaviors will be our learning outcome. We want to know, right, are they engaging in these different aspects of sustainable behaviors? And we adopted these two papers and using their constructs and scale. And in uh, this study, they identified socially and culturally sustainable behaviors, more tourist behaviors, as two dimensions, which I agree with. So we used four dimensions to assess sustainable tourist behaviors. One more element in this study is global citizenship identity. So global citizenship identity is a social identity whereby individuals identify with all humankind and the global community. Although, yes, global citizenship has sub-dimensions, but in this study, we focus on identity and we use it as one overall concept. So thinking about memory, sustainable behaviors, and global citizenship, we then can put it into a pretty simple model. That is, we start with directing, uh, using study abroad memory for the directive purposes and how do we how are our students using that function for developing their sustainable tourist behaviors so that's the direct path and in between global citizenship identity we think will be a bridge connecting memory and sustainable tourist behaviors and then we want to evaluate that mediating effect now, while well, this model looks simple, if you add all of the variables to the model, it becomes quite a complicated model. So here are our hypotheses. To the left are the two dimensions of the functions of memory. To the right are the four dimensions of sustainable behavior in between its global citizenship. So hypothesis one and two are the link from functions of memory to the four dimensions of sustainable tourist behaviors. Hypothesis three through five are all about global citizenship identity. Before we understand the mediating effect, right, we need to first make sure there is a direct connection from the use of memory to our global citizenship identity. That's our hypothesis number three. And also we need to make sure there is a direct path from global citizenship identity to the four dimensions of sustainable behaviors. So that's our hypothesis number four. And then number five is about the mediating effect of global citizenship identity.
Okay, so now you know what we are testing here. Here are our data collection and analysis about how we test it. Um, for data collection, we used self-administered online survey. We surveyed study abroad alumni from two universities, uh, actually not Florida. Uh, we collected data from University of Tennessee and Auburn. 289 were from one university and another 204 were from another university. Our sample covered participants from uh, pretty much the past 10 years. We collected uh, in the summer 2022. And here are the demographic information of our sample. As you would expect, it's pretty much reflected the population of the two universities and also the typical distribution of study abroad participants. So mainly we have female participants and the majority of them are in their 20 to 30 years of age, which is what we want. We want alumni who not just finish their study abroad right away, we want to have years um, for them to develop their behaviors and now they can reflect on their study abroad memories. For their ethnicity, the majority of them are white, which as I said, basically is just reflecting the population of the two universities. In terms of the type of programs, we covered all the different types of the programs that universities offered. And uh, they range from one week all the way to a whole academic year. As you probably know, the most popular types of programs are short-term faculty-led programs. In terms of data analysis, as you saw the model, you probably know we used SEM and uh, PLS SEM to be specific because we do have one construct directing travel behavior that is a formative construct. So PLS SEM is the most appropriate type uh, of analysis to use here. Before I, we move on to the results of the hypothesis, I also want to show you the descriptive statistics. Here is the list of all of the variables that you saw in the model, two about memory, one about global citizenship, and four about sustainable behaviors. Here is their aggregated mean scores. And all of the variables are evaluated on a five point scale. So you know three is the mutual point and the higher the score, the more that uh, they are using their memory. They identify as global citizens and they are engaging in some of the sustainable behaviors. But I also wanna highlight that we notice our alumni were not necessarily engaging in environmentally sustainable behaviors. So we um, do, I do want to highlight this, which gave us a general idea about how well we were doing in terms of promoting sustainable behaviors. And this video will stop here and Heather will continue presenting the results.